A huge thank you to Jeff Holmes for bringing you today's video via Patreon. Gore Muldrak, Amphenologist, versus Tuvasa, Cosima God of the Voyage, and Inferno of the Star Mounts. Decided to keep this opener with a little bit of ramp from the Sakura Tribe Elder, as well as some removal there. Just a basic from Tuvasa, we are next in the turn order. Draw into a standard eyes, which should be useful later on. We can use that aggressively or defensively. Um, if all of their creatures are salamanders and they hit us, then they can't deal any damage thanks to the protection. Or we could get straight through all the blockers, again thanks to protection. Just get down a polluted delta and pass the turn after cracking it for the uh, snow jewel. Then each of my opponents just deciding to go for a basic piece. We get a Kodama's Reach, so that's really good because we're about to get our third land from the Sakura Tribe Elder. So we will cast that. The Mono Blue player casting his commander as Omen Keel. No means of crewing that yet, but we'll be able to swing in next turn potentially. And then we see Tuvasa coming into play from the Bant player, the first commander of the game. Okay, and we could go for our commander here. We draw into uh, Seagate Restoration, which is a Bolt land. Uh, so I think we go Kodama's Reach for a couple of Snow Forests. And then we'll get the Seagate Reborn into play tap to save us bolting ourselves later on. I don't think we're anywhere close to casting that, so might as well get it down as a land here. And we're looking pretty good for our commander next turn, I think. Just wanted to slip in here as well that I have set up a new channel called No White Borders and would very much like you to go over and check that out. Throw up a few paper games on this channel, uh, but they get lost in and amongst all the other stuff, so uh, I thought it was better to set up a new channel for the people who just want to see that type of content. So I'll leave a link in the description for that and would very much appreciate you all going and checking it out. Reliquary Tower for the Mono Blue player. Still seven cards in hand and just passing the turn, so probably holding up counter magic. <laughs> Reliquary Tower 4 to Vasa as well. And there we see ourselves a ghostly prison, so definitely going to be building a pillow fort, I would think. That does cantrip, thanks to the two Vasa. And then it's passed around to us, so okay, getting to Ristic Study. We'll drop the forest straight away. And we'll go for Muldrak first, because I'd rather that be countered than the Ristic Study. I'm not in love with our hand at the moment. That is allowed down, so perhaps not taking the bait. We'll go for the Ristic Study here. Alright, awesome, and that lands. So, uh, yeah, doing pretty well on curving out here. Pass over to the red player, who is stuck on two lands at the moment, seemingly. But before that, we go through our end steps. So, the mono blue and the mono red player are going to get a Salamander each. Okay, and they drop a Path of Ancestry, so still stuck on two mana, but at least making a land this time. Deciding not to swing in with the Salamander. Okay, and tapping out into Ristic Study, that's good for us. That is Tor Ralph's Hammer, so playing the equipment version of that. And we draw into another land off the Study, so that's good. We've got a land to make for next turn. Well, arguably they wouldn't have had a means of crewing their commander previously, but they do now thanks to the Salamander, so they do crew the Ormond Keel. And now swinging in with the Omen Keel, thanks to it not having Summoning Sickness, that does go in towards Tuvasa, so going to get some mill here seemingly. Obviously paying into the Ghostly Prison as well. So that hits, and Tuvasa exiling off the top, an Energy Flux, in search of greatness. And a Seal of Cleansing, that's a good one to get rid of, 3 for 3 on the enchantments. Not worthy that a Temple of the False God has come into play as well, they will need one more land to make use of that. Okay, and the Pillar 14 continues, a Sphere of Safety from Tuvasa now, and playing into the Ristic Study, that's fine with me. So we are going to draw another card, as is Tuvasa. And then holding back the Tuvasa, it's round to our turn, we draw another land. So we'll drop the fetch, we can go for a tapped breeding pool. And I don't think we're necessarily going to make much use of Greater Good, but we'll get it in now, just so that it's in play. Saves us casting 4 mana later on, I suppose. We're each going to get a Salamander this turn, as it stands now. So, end step completed, and round two Inferno's turn, we each get that Salamander, like I said. The Mono Red player managing to make the fourth land, and now going for a Mana Barbs, alright, so... Giving us another card with the Ristic Study, thanks to missing land drops. But potentially the players with more lands going to be punished here. Okay, and the Mono Blue player going straight into attacks, crewing up the Omen Keel again. 
And they're attacking us, curiously, so... I don't really want to lose my Salamander, but... I suppose it sets us up for next turn, where we will get more of them, so... Yeah, let's get rid of their commander. These two will trade, thanks to the three power against three toughness. Yeah, didn't have any tricks up his sleeve there, apparently. It just goes back to the command zone. I think he was just trying his luck. And now, during the second main, casting a chart, of course. So... Yeah, maybe needed to do that to get into the lands. Seven cards in hand. Maybe doesn't have any lands. And then taking the damage from the mana barbs to pay for the Ristic Study. And now it's a Dermataxi, so another vehicle. And they're again taking the damage to mana barbs in order to pay for Ristic Study. Another Enchantress to help out to Vassan out. That is Setison Champion, one of the better ones. And they too pay into the Study, making that a four mana Enchantress. Everyone has more creatures than us now, so that bodes well for us. I will crack the Scalding Tarn here, we'll get that uh, tap breeding pool in. The less amount of life that we take to lands, the better, thanks to Mana Barbs. Ah, okay, that's not bad, we're getting to Coat of Arms. So can have our opponents killing each other slowly, or, well, pretty damn fast if Coat of Arms has anything to say about it. If I want that to happen, then I have to take down this pillow fort as best I can, so... Maybe Song of the Dryads onto Sphere of Safety would be a good idea. So, taking a Lightning Bolt to the Mana Barbs. And I think I'm just going to hold up the Sudden Substitution here. Um, not entirely sure what I'm aiming to get with it. I'm not aiming to get anything in particular, but... But Coat of Arms still a little bit dangerous yet, because we'd only have two blockers, and... I don't know, maybe our opponents get some more creatures down. I'd rather just not take the risk as it stands now. The Torolf's Hammer being equipped onto one of the Salamanders, so that could spell the end for our commander. have to assume that they're looking at the Enchantresses over us, but uh, maybe not. Maybe they do like getting the free Salamanders. And just deciding to hold back at that and going over to the blue player again. Okay, and we're seeing Cosmina now coming out of the command zone, coming as the god this time. And they do pay for the Ristic Study tax. Oh, alright, I'm glad I waited now. A privileged position sounds pretty good to steal. Giving all of our other permanents hexproof. Could have counter magic here, but... I don't particularly mind them countering it, I'd rather land the coat of arms, so... Yeah, let's trade our Salamander for the privileged position. Taking four damage to that, thanks to the mana barbs. This does have split seconds, so um, the Torolf's hammer can't lightning bolt something here. Although I think they'll be able to do it with privileged positions still on the stack, so I don't think we're out of the woods just yet with regards to our commander being protected. Anyway, our opponent does get the salamander. All right, awesome, that lands. So they decided not to lightning bolt before we got hexproof on our commander and all of our other permanents, so I think we're looking really, really good here now. Landing Coat of Arms with the greater good in play is going to be a great means of card draw for us as well. Yeah, it's pretty slow and clunky, but I think we're very slowly getting somewhere. It's nothing if not unique. Alright, drawing to Counterspell this time, drop a land, and we're going to get a Salamander token here. So I like the fact that we're protected with Hexproof. Let's just risk the coat of arms here, I think. We've got protection from Salamanders in that instant if we want to uh, protect ourselves with that. Our commander goes on the stack, but before then, the Torov's hammer is being pointed, curiously, at the Mono Blue player. I would think you would want to take out Tuvasa, if anything. That is still a 2-2 as it stands now. Anyway, the Lightning Bot lands on the Cosima, and it's round two, the Mono Red player's turn. The Salamanders are 11-10s here, by the way. Noteworthy that the Setters and Champions jumped up to a 9-11 as well, because it is a warrior, as are the Salamanders. Okay, Toralf's Hammer going back to hand, and then out comes the god Toralf, god of fury. So operating a little bit like a Torbrand deck at the moment. Cosima triggers at the beginning of the turn, so they can exile it and send it off on a voyage here if they want. And they do that, so into the exile zone goes Cosima. Okay, and then floating two mana and going for a free gush, so you can bounce the two lands back, which they have done before or after floating the two mana, I should say. 
So that is draw two cards. They do pay into the Rhystic Study. And then playing one of the lands they just bounced will trigger the Cosima. Oh, and that's always a scary one. Master Transmuter. So, yeah, can trade an artifact in play with an artifact in hand. Usually cheat out really big scary artifacts with that. Again, paying for the tax and just holding up two mana. Going through at two. The Bant player's turn. Tapping down a bunch of mana and taking a lot of damage here. And uh, that is Stormtide Leviathan. Mm. That is going to throw a spanner into the works for us. Yeah, can't have Stormtide Leviathan landing. I think we're going to have to counter that. So letting them take all the damage. Letting them pay into the Rhystic Study as well. Because they might have had a Swan Song or something. Although I doubt it if they're not letting us draw. So we will go for Counter Spell onto the Leviathan. And that does successfully get countered, so thankfully we're still going to be able to swing in with the Salamanders. <laughs> now as punishment, the Setson Champion swinging in towards us. That is a big scary creature, as we've already been over, so... Yeah, we're going to have to block here, I think. Don't have protection from that, unfortunately. I was hoping we could start attacking in. I want to go in towards the blue player and try and get them to block with the Artificer, but... Yeah, we're just going to have to... Uh, block the Setson Champion and then go for the card draw with the Greater Good. Would have been nice to attack in and then sack it to the Greater Good, but here we are. Alright, there is a Reliquary Tower. So discard the two basics. Balagad Recovery I like. We can grab back counter spells and stuff. I think I'll get rid of Life's Legacy because we've already got Greater Good. Can always grab back the Life's Legacy for the sake of the life gain. The life gain might be relevant this game thanks to the mono red player over there. And then at the end of the turn, we'll go for another ping. Let's grab Worldly Tutor and uh, we'll see what creature we can draw into here. I'm thinking Adrix and Nev at the moment because it's uh, double the tokens for us. Angler Turtle isn't a bad idea because we can force our opponents to attack each combat. But I think that's a slightly more late game play. Coma's not bad either. I think we go for Adrix and Nev here. Okay, so drawing into that, obviously. First thing I want to do is drop Reliquary Tower for no maximum hand size. Don't want to mistakenly play something else. And then we'll play out the Adrix and Nev because that is going to give us the double tokens. We are going to get two Salamanders thanks to this at the end of the turn. And us having the fewest number of creatures. And then we can't grab back the uh, counter spell with Eternal Witness because we'll have too many creatures then so... Let's go for the Balagad Recovery and grab back the Counter Spell. And then once again, it's through to the end step. We're going to get a couple more Salamanders here and buff all the Salamanders in play by an extra plus two, plus two. The Salamanders are 12 11s now. Well, the red player's tapping into something scary. Oh, that is a Dictate of the Twin Gods. Yeah, that is a scary one. If a source would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double that damage instead. So that means Mana Barbs is dealing two to us per land we tap. They do pay into the study there as well. Rhystic Study and Mana Barbs going very nicely hand in hand with each other. Unfortunately seeing that Artificer lose Summoning Sickness now. Nine cards in the Mono Blue player's hand and I have to imagine they've got a good artifact they can throw down with that. Landfall and Cosima triggering again. But the Mono Blue player just passing the turn no doubt because of the two damage per land on Mana Barbs. <laughs> and the Bant player doing exactly the same thing. Uh, not worthy that there is an Alchemist Refuge over there, so they can play things with Flash if they so desire. Alright, so I think I'm going to not tap any mana myself and do my damnedest to get rid of the red player as quickly as I can. So turn both of these Salamanders in sideways towards, towards the Dragon player. So the 5-4 Tauralf blocking a 12-11 Salamander and 12 damage getting through here. So that is doubled up to 24 damage going through of course thanks to the Dictate that the red player played. And now they basically can't tap any mana unless they want to lose so yeah we've put them in a difficult spot to say the least. Can go for the Forbidden Orchard now and start giving my opponents more creatures trying to uh, dictate who controls more creatures so that we can obviously take advantage of that. So I'll tap that down for a mana, we will lose two life and just go for the Mystical Tutor here I think. The uh, Spirit can go under the control of the red player and then they will be tied for three creatures. 
and then we can either sacrifice one salamander and uh, the blue player, the red player and ourselves will get salamanders or we can sack two salamanders and get them straight back either way we're getting two salamanders this turn cast the mystical tutor and I think just more counter magic back up to sit on is pretty good we're just encouraging our opponents to try and do something about us at this point so then with that on the top we can draw into it with the greater good let's sacrifice a salamander and we draw a heap of cards have to discard three we'll just get rid of a couple of lands again and then just looking through the hand here I think we're okay to get rid of the Merc Fiend Liege um, that's in here as a little bit of a buff but more of a uh, Seed Ball Muse uh, pseudo vigilance type effect on the Salamanders just in case we need to block something we don't have protection from so I won't sacrifice the other Salamander the tapped one we'll just give the red and blue player one and we will get two thanks to the Adrix and Nev Salamanders are 15 14s at the moment thanks to the coat of arms okay the red player going for some kind of Hail Mary attempt with something here casting pyretic ritual so they will have more mana before the mana barbs resolve letting us draw with the rhystic study gets us a cultivate okay and they had nothing so just decided to scoop before taking the mana barbs damage so uh, down goes the first player didn't see the Artificer bring anything in, curiously. Still nine cards in hand over there. Make a land, triggering the Cosima again. Alright, and then these Salamanders coming in towards us. Uh, I'm not sure what trick they could have here, to be honest. Maybe looking for us to kill off their Salamanders so that we can't get them on the swing back. So, I think the thing to do is not block here. I mean... Gore Muldrak definitely gives us protection from the Salamanders as well as our permanents, so yeah, they can't deal damage to us with those things. I think they're just trying to get us to kill some of them off so that it will debuff our Salamanders and we can't get them on the swing back, which we currently can, unless they get another creature into play to block with. Anyway, we'll let the damage through, do have protection from that. Alright, and survive combat there, so our opponent didn't have any kind of trick that they could have uh, got off on us. We've got Hexproof and lots of counter magic back up anyway. And then the Bant player once again just going straight through to the end step. So sitting on that Alchemist Refuge apparently with five cards in hand. Going to go for some removal. I'm still worried about this Artificer so let's go Reality Shift and try and force their hand. Alright surprisingly that does get exiled so they get a Manifest Token that they can still block us with. Let's also go for Rapid Hybridization. That can go on to the Setison Champion. Because that is a big creature that we also can take damage to. Plenty of means of giving unblockable, so definitely get rid of it now while we can. And then I think we're okay to just go through to our turn here. Drawing to Metamorphic Alteration. Um, not particularly bothered about turning our salamanders into anything here there's nothing in particular that would be good to copy could switch off the two vasa and turn that into a salamander i suppose anyway start the turn off with the sol ring and then before we play anything else why not just go straight through to combat and maximize the amount of mana that we have so it's all three of our big salamanders going in towards the blue player and we should go wide here they do have cyclonic rift mana held up Blocking with a manifest creature before going for... Okay, that's an etherize. Um, bouncing the tokens back to our hand. Make them pay for the Rhystic Study before anything else. Uh, they could still counter us here, but we can counter their counter. I dare say we win this little bout, so... Just go for the counter spell again. That's the card that they know about. And I'll tap down the Forbidden Orchard so that we can give our opponents more creatures. So that we benefit from the salamander triggers give the spirit token to the bant player so now they have five creatures in play and there we are take care of the mono blue player excellent so two down and one to go now just to further annoy our opponents let's go for the mystic sanctuary and we can grab that counter spell back and put it on top of our library again and i think it's really going to hurt our opponent going for the angler turtle so we'll get that into play here definitely glad to see the back of mana barbs Angler Turtle is a decent blocker and 
your opponents have to attack each turn, basically. That lands successfully, so now I will sacrifice a salamander again to the greater good. And we can draw our opponents on number of creatures, five apiece. Drawing eight cards and discarding three this time. And once again getting into a bunch more mana as you would expect, so discard a couple of lands and a signet. Uh, we can keep our opponent off a salamander here and give ourselves a couple more, so... Yeah, we'll do that. They'll still be big enough to swing in for lethal potentially next turn. We can make all of their creatures salamanders and just swing through for the victory. So discarding some more mana to the greater good. Obviously have the counter spell in hand again now after we put it on top. And in all that drew into mana crypt so we'll cast the mana crypt. Always good to have more mana available to us. And then end of the turn triggers again we get more salamanders. They are back up to eight sevens. Get a couple of those thanks to Adrix and Nev. Okay our opponents still not making use of the alchemist's refuge. So starting their turn off. And they go straight through to attacks. They do have to attack with everything. So we will just block all of their non-salamander creatures. The turtle can go onto the frogified, pongified creature, whatever it's called. Block the spirit and block the two Vasa. So those three creatures go down. The salamanders get through to us, but can't be dealt damage by those thanks to the protection off our commander. And then it's through to the end step. So yeah, looks pretty promising for us getting our opponent this turn. We do get bolted by Mana Crypt, have to be careful of that. Might have to grab that life's legacy for the life gain. But we can just go straight through to combat here I think, and the three Salamanders are enough to take care of our opponent. We have to pay six into the Ghostly Prison, which is fine. Alright, and then our opponent does have something with the Alchemist Refuge, so... Going to play something with Flash here, maybe get a blocker into play. <laughs> no, it is the Supreme Verdict, alright. Uh, yeah, one of the few ways that they could have actually dealt with us there. I don't think there's anything we can do about Supreme Verdict. No, nothing we can do about that. I think maybe it's worth evacuation here to save Adrix and the Turtle. As well as saving some tax on our commander. Haven't lost it yet, this game. Yeah, let's go for the evacuation and bounce all the creatures back to hand, it doesn't benefit our opponent, one iota. Being careful not to tap the exotic orchard here, because I do want them to have a spirit in play, so that we get a salamander as well as them, once our commander hits play again. I think I am going to recast the commander here. So the creatures get bounced, supreme verdict, wipes out nothing, and now we can tap the exotic orchard to give our opponent a creature. And we will be one apiece after my commander comes into play. So through to the end step once again, and Muldrak gets us each a Salamander token. And that's a shame our opponent scoops at that, so that was obviously their, um, yeah, their big Hail Mary attempt at not losing. We've just pretty much outpaced them here with regards to card advantage. Um, I'm not really sure what we do here, probably just rebuild the same board, get the turtle back into play the Angler Turtle, and the Adrix and Nev again, so that we can um, have more Salamanders in play than our opponent does. I think the most useful card to us that game, along with Coat of Arms, was the Greater Good. Great to have um, Hexproof on everything, but the Greater Good really, really did a lot of work for us there. Allowed us to control how many creatures we had in play so that we could get more Salamanders, as well as draw a hell of a lot of cards. So. Yeah, once again, greater good doing some work. So there we are, thought I would try something a little bit different before Kamigawa kicks off. Kamigawa should be with us within the next week or so, so hopefully you all look forward to that. I am very much looking forward to some of the commanders coming out in that set. Haven't looked forward to a set uh, with regards to commander for a long time now, probably about a year. And really liking the look of the ones we're getting in Kamigawa, so hopefully you are as well. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest videos from this channel. And check out the Paper Gameplay channel as well, No White Borders. I'm Tribal Kai on the EDH channel. Thank you for watching.